They could did something. Of course, it was the last time I saw my kid. I begged the police, please, please stop them. We can't do nothing, sorry. They could save my kid from, you know, being abducted. And they didn't, because they were only following orders and not bringing up common sense. That's the mom of Ernest Diaz, uh, the mom of little Jean-Paul, who you saw there on that bus, frightened, did not want to go with his dad. And, and that's the question many of us have. Let's go to the phones. Tina's with us in New York, uh, just about what police could have done here to make sure this should happen. Uh, Tina, your thoughts? Hi. Hey, I, I just, it is so scary as a parent to know that an officer of any standing would take a screaming child off the bus and put him into the hands of somebody that he obviously does not want to be with. I don't understand that. Yeah, Tina, you're, you're right. Chrissy writes this on Facebook. That officer has, quote unquote, no cop instinct. W what a shame. Let's bring in our reporter, Craig Capitan, reporter of San Antonio Express News. Has there been any statement from authorities, from police, about how this went down, that uh, why they didn't take a step to protect this 10 year old? Well, I think. Uh the, uh, the the response was that uh, they were just doing what the judge told them to do. It's mm. uh, they, they believe it was difficult to uh, ignore a judge's order. Okay, simple enough. Steve Rogers, well, let's hit on this real quick though. Shouldn't instinct jump in here? As you said, I mean, if that if you if you were the officer arriving on a scene like this and a ten year old is that frightened, laying on the ground after this, after he gets off the bus, what should what can you do? to make sure this is on the up and up and this should happen. Common sense and instinct would kick in, uh, as I said, and I, I don't like second guessing police right. officers, but I, I've got to in this case. Those officers would have been prudent to deliver that child to Child Protective Services to make sure that everything was in order to find out why this child was yelling, he's gonna hit me, he's gonna abuse me. These are things those officers should have done and I'll bet you in hindsight, they believe they should have done that. Okay, let, let's bring back Susan Reed, uh, District Attorney, who's been following this. Let's simplify this, uh, Susan. Here's the way we understand it. The custody, re this is the way at least the father presented it. Custody resolved in Mexico, even though it was false, and that's where the loophole comes in. If you have custody solved in another country, a court here is not going to retry that case. So that's why it could get expedited. They're going to give effect to the orders of Mexico. And what they did, though, is they told the court that the that the order said one thing when in fact they had been superseded and the mother was supposed to have custody of the child right exactly okay um, and this had happened to her before right in france and they had honored the mexico decree which our country would have honored had the court been given the proper <laughs> right. document the one that was the truth that was on the up and up not yeah. this that was fabric uh, it was finagled we'll say uh, manipulated exactly in, in his favor um, we reached out to the attorneys for the dad here who helped in this proceeding did not get a comment back Susan I'll ask you what do you know about any kind of statement from his attorneys what they're saying and could they be uh, and what could they be facing anything coming back at them well you know the civil courts have kind of thrown up their hands on this and in fact that's one reason I'm stepping in here uh, I tell you, the attorney for the mother went to the civil courts and asked for sanctions, asked for a contempt order against the father, asked for sanctions, and the father attorneys on this Monday, after you s saw what happened mm -hmm. on Friday on the bus, went into court and they non-suited their petition. And then the courts What's say, that mean? well, they just dismissed it. Mm. So the father gets the relief he wants on Thursday. Well, they the trying to wash their hands of it? Is that what you're saying? That's exactly what I'm saying. He comes in, and then on Monday, they go there. When he's supposed to bring the child to court for that hearing, he doesn't appear. The child's not there. The attorneys show up, and they say, hey, non suit. We're dismissing this case. And then later, her attorney comes in and says, wait a minute, let's go, let's have a sanction here. Let's have a, 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 a 
do something to the father. Mm. And they're all saying, it's been non-suited, there's nothing to do. At okay. which point, I'm learning of this right. and say, wait a minute. Wow. <laughs> there's an interference with custody here. Yeah. There's a manipulation of the system that has led to essentially a kidnapping. So I requested the, um, the orders on, uh, for arrest. And who knows where he is right now? Let's bring back Craig Capitan. A couple of things, Craig. First off, this, he, this little guy was fearful. We, we saw his reaction. Are there allegations of abuse against the father? Well, it's the, uh, th those allegations have been made in, in previous uh, uh, divorce documents. Uh, there are allegations made on both sides. Uh, the father said, uh, uh, said all sorts of uh, uh, awful things about the mother. And uh, I, I, in the end, the court system, it looks like in Mexico, sided with the mother. Uh, Susan, have you seen or heard of any allegations of abuse against the father through all this? You know, this is the first, the child's outcry on the bus was the first that I am aware of an allegation, at least within our county where we could do anything, okay. to speak to the sergeant's suggestion of calling uh, Child Protective Services. Child Protective Services actually has a hotline that the police can call into when they get into this kind of a situation. And that that's what you're done. saying. I mean, back to Steve Rogers' point, the point of a lot of our viewers is that in a, you've got a crying 10-year-old uh, an upset mom and a little brother in this really sad, traumatic scene. Don't you make a call to tell people what's going on here? Susan, I'll ask you. Well, you have a child that's saying, I've been hit. Right. And as a law enforcement officer, any individual actually has a duty to report child abuse. And, 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 and there is a facility within the Child Protective Services, even for law enforcement, where they, they don't even have to wait on hold at the hotline. Yeah. They go straight through. And then Child Protective Services can work, even with the attorneys in my office that represent Child Protective Services in the courts mm -hmm. on turnover issues. Gotcha. And, and uh, where, when we have to take children out of abusive homes. Okay. Steve, real quick, you want to weigh in on this? Yeah, yeah Mike, uh, the police department statement that the officers are just doing their job, obeying a court order, they wouldn't have broken the court order if they did what the uh, attorney just said, uh, make that phone call, yeah. go that extra mile. Just make sure, go the extra mile. Real quick, last one, Craig Capitan. Craig? This guy's a millionaire, the dad. I mean, he could be anywhere, right? Yeah, uh, he's, uh, he has dual citizenship, French and uh, Mexican. He, uh, the mother said since their divorce, he's uh, married a Russian woman. Uh, he, he, she thinks he went there during the two years he was in France with the boy, uh, and he inherited millions from his parents. So she, her, she and her attorney say you know, he has nothing better to do than to uh, go around uh, harassing her or, in this case, uh, you know, disappearing. Any sightings of him at, at, on a road, at an airport, anything? Uh, nothing that we've heard uh, since uh, the mother saw the father at the airport uh, the day after the, the boy was picked up. So mom says at the, at the airport, so she believes he's long gone out of the country. Uh, yeah, uh, she, right. they, they don't know where he could be, but there's a good chance. Uh, okay. Why would he still be in San Antonio? Okay, well, uh, we'll continue to follow this one again. It's heartbreaking to see that video of a 10-year-old so upset and pleading for help. Uh, uh, thanks again, everyone. Craig, Susan, Steve, we